Remember in the last video when we discussed the events in vanilla JS, we covered that when we pass the callback function, we have access to an event object. And in that object, we can find a bunch of useful info. And guess what? We can do the same thing in React. So every callback function, so every function that we're referencing is going to have access to that event. And since it's a parameter, of course, we can give it whatever name we want. So you can go with E, which is pretty popular. You can go with event and always bananas is also an option. And let's just log it in the input. So we can see what values we're getting back. And then we'll talk about the form submissions. So as far as the handle form input, I'm going to go here and we'll do a few logs in this video. So let's start with an event and check it out. And here we'll find a bunch of useful info. Now the ones that we'll use the most are event.target.name. So target effectively is going to point back to an element. In our case, since we're logging it in the input, yes, it's pointing back to an input. And then remember in the previous video, we set up name is equal to an example. And if we want to access that name, we go with event.target.name. And if we want to get the value, we go with event.target.value. And essentially, this is going to allow us to collect the data from the input. And again, we're not going to cover the entire example because we haven't covered the state yet. But just to showcase that it's actually a case, let me go here with log and then event.target essentially is going to be our input. And then let's copy and paste. And if you want, of course, you can write some additional text over here just so you can see which one is which. But in my case, I'm going to go with the first one name and then the second one value. And again, it's going to log once we provide some value in input. And notice, so the first one is my element. The second one is the value that we provide for the name. So of course, if I'll change this around, and if I'll say product, and if I'm going to go back to an input, and if I'll type some kind of letter, now, of course, in a console, I'll see the product. And the third one is the actual value in the input. And last one is the original log that we set up in the previous video. So these two we'll use quite often throughout the course. And also, we'll use prevent default, which is very useful when we have the form. So if we want to respond to form submissions, we just need to set up an event. So we're going to go here with on submit. And let's create that function as well. So let me copy and paste. And I'm going to rename it to handle form submission. Hopefully I'm spelling this correctly. And for now, let's just log something, at least try to actually will fail. That's the whole purpose why we covered the event object. So let's go with form submitted. And then let's pass in the handle form submission. And once I save, I mean, it doesn't really matter whether we type something in the input or no, if we'll press enter, essentially return, we should see something in the browser, but we don't. So we can clearly see that something happened. Notice over here, we have this product, but we didn't see anything in the browser. And the reason for that is because the default behavior of the forms is to collect those values and essentially send it to some URL. Now, in this case, we don't want to do that. We want to handle the forms ourselves. And that's why we want to access the event again, same as with handle form input, we have right away access to it. And in there, there is a function called event dot and then prevent default. So this is also something that we use quite often. And effectively, this just means that we will handle those form submissions ourselves. And as you can see, now, we can clearly see this log in the console. So each and every reference function is going to have access to event 
in there we can find a bunch of useful things but mostly we'll work with target target.name target.value as well as event prevent default